I used to think I had lived a past life. I wish I could tell you more than that, but the memory started to fade as I left childhood and now I can't really remember it at all. Have any of you had a similar experience to that? That feeling that you've seen this all before, that you were another person once who loved and cried and lived and, you know, eventually died. A few of you will relate to that, but once in a blue moon, someone is born with a much stronger version of that. They can remember names and faces. Sometimes they even still feel like their old self and they refuse to accept their new life. It gets really, really strange. These are my favorite stories. I'm Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 creepy reincarnation stories. Starting off at number 10 now, we have The General. In 2015, retired fire chief Jeffrey Keane came across evidence which he suggested was proof that he was Civil War General John B. Gordon in a past life. Yeah, not everyone can say that. While visiting a Civil War battlefield, he was inexplicably overcome with emotion and had trouble breathing. At one point, he even thought he was having a heart attack. A while later, he spoke to a psychic. As they talked, he felt compelled to say the words, not yet for no reason. He didn't know why he said those two words. Later on though, he found a Civil War magazine and while flicking through it, the words not yet in quotation marks sort of jumped out at him. It was quoting the words of General Gordon who said them while telling his troops to stay back during a battle on the exact same part of the battlefield where Jeffrey felt like he was having that heart attack. The picture of the general in the magazine also looked a lot like him. It gets weirder though. When Jeffrey turned 30, he went to hospital hospital with an immense pain in his jaw and face. No cause was found. Sure enough, when investigators looked through General Gordon's life, he was shot in the face when he was 30 years old. It could all be a coincidence, but it's pretty strange, don't you think? Next up at number 9 now, we have the Golden Age. Ryan Hammonds was a boy who, at the age of 4, began having nightmares of people and places he didn't recognise. After a few months, he began to describe the details of this. It sounded like he was remembering the Golden Age of Hollywood. Cindy became concerned that there was more to Ryan's nightmares than initially thought. Cindy looked through a book about Hollywood and was amazed when Ryan pointed to a man in a photo and calmly said it was him in a past life. A child psychologist interviewed Ryan and found that he accurately described about 55 details of the man in the photo, an actor and Hollywood agent who had died in 1964. One creepy thing that stood out was that first they thought Ryan had got the age of death wrong for this guy called Marty. He said that he was 61 when he died, the death certificate said 59, but it turns out that the death certificate was actually wrong and Ryan was right the whole time. How could he have known that? That's kind of weird. Coming at number eight now, we have The Grandfather. This is a story of a boy called Sam who was studied by Dr. Jim B. Tucker of the University of Virginia. Now, when Sam was four years old, his grandmother died. On that day, his father brought out an old photo album. Sam had never seen a picture of his grandfather before. When Sam saw a picture of his grandfather's first car, he pointed to it and said, that's my car. When they showed him a picture of his granddad and some of his friends from when he was a boy, Sam pointed right to his grandfather father and said, there I am. They told him, no, that's your grandfather. He said again, no, that's me. He then began to share a lot of details that were creepily accurate. One that stood out was when he turned to his mother one day and said that in his past life, as his grandfather, someone had turned his sister into a fish. They asked him, who? He said, bad men. His grandfather's sister had actually been murdered and her corpse was dumped in a body of water. Is this proof of his reincarnation or a little bit of a stretch? I'll be interested to hear your opinions on this one. Next up at number seven now, guys, we have the fire. This is the story of Luke Ruhlman, a five-year-old boy who claimed to have lived a past life as Pam Robinson, an African-American woman from Chicago who died in a fire at the Paxton Hotel in 1993. It all started when Luke was just two years old. He would talk about a woman called Pam. Eventually, his mother asked him who this Pam woman was. He said he used to be her, but then he died and went to heaven. He saw God, and then eventually, God pushed him back down, and he was a baby and then he was named Luke. More details came later. Luke's mother investigated all of this and found Pam Robinson, one of the 19 people who died in the 1993 hotel fire. Luke said that was him. I encourage you guys to read the full story and see for yourselves if there is anything to Luke's story of 
reincarnation. Moving on to number 6 now we have Shanti Devi. When this Indian woman was 4 years old she told her parents that her real home was in Mathura where her husband lived. Now Mathura was about 90 miles from her home in Delhi. Her parents tried to ignore her story which frustrated Shanti so much that she ran away from home at the age of just 6 years old. She was trying to meet Mathura but was taken back before she could get there. She kept telling details of her past life though, telling people that she used to be married and that she died 10 days after giving birth to her child. Eventually her headmaster at school found a man in Mathura who said this story matched that of his wife who had died. Her name was Ludgi Devi. He too became convinced that Shanti Devi was the reincarnation of his wife. Shanti never married and continued to tell her story for the rest of her life. Coming in at number 5 now we have the murder. Karanfil Tatuzmas was 2 days away from the birth of her son in 1958 when she had a dream one night. In the dream she saw a man whose face was covered in blood entering her room. She asked him why he had come and told him to leave as her husband was away. He told her that his name was Salim Fesli and that he had been shot in the ear. When she awoke, Karanfil remembered hearing about a man just like that in a nearby village who had been accidentally killed. She told her husband about the dream. Her husband said he actually used to know the man. The boy was born and as soon as he began to talk, he insisted that he was the reincarnation of the man in the dream. Except he claimed his death had been no accident and that he had actually been murdered. At the age of 4, he went to the village and talked with the man's widow. He recounted their life together and told the woman that he, the reincarnation of her husband, had not been killed in a hunting accident, he had been murdered. The widow and her children visited the boy as he grew up and very much believed that he was the reincarnation of the man they all knew. Moving on to number 4 now we have solving a murder. There wasn't too much to go on with this story but I'll give it a shot anyway. In 2015 it was reported that a 3 year old boy from Golan Heights had a long red birthmark on his head. He claimed that he had been murdered in a past life that the mark was a sign of his murder. Dr. Eli Lask investigated the case. When they went to a city, the boy recalled his original first and last names and the names of his murderer. A local overheard all of this and said that the name of the man who the boy claimed to be had actually gone missing four years earlier. The boy was then able to find his old home. He walked right up to a man nearby and said, I used to be your neighbour. We had a fight and you killed me with an axe. The man turned pale and the boy continued. I I even know where you buried my body. The boy led them to the burial site and also found where the axe was hidden. The man then confessed to the murder. Incredibly, the location on the man's skull where the murderer's axe hit was exactly the same place as the boy's birthmark. Next up at number 3 now we have Anne Frank. Babro Carlin was born in Sweden in 1954 to Christian parents. Around the age of 3 she told her parents that she was not Barbro but actually Anne Frank. She stopped acknowledging them as her real parents and told them that her real parents would come and get her soon. As she got older she told them details of her life as Anne. Around age 7 or 8 she became very confused when her school teacher began talking about Anne Frank in class. She wondered how the teacher could know all these things about her. That's when she found out that Anne Frank was already a very famous person by then who had lived before, a victim of the Holocaust whose diary became one of the most important books in history. When she visited Amsterdam for the first first time she walked straight to Anne Frank's house without directions. Inside the house she was stricken with anxiety, she broke out into a cold sweat and grabbed her mother's hand. She told her mother that the movie star pictures were still on the wall. Her mother couldn't see any of these, that's when one of the tour guides told them that they had been taken down for the day to be mounted on glass and put back up. The story goes on and on. There have been countless books written about it if you're still interested to hear more and it really is interesting. Moving on to number 2 now guys we have the Pollock twins. Mr and Mrs Pollock were a couple who lived in Hexham, England. In 1957 tragedy struck when their daughters Joanna aged 11 and Jacqueline aged 5 were killed in a car accident. Their parents were devastated. A year went by and Mrs Pollock became pregnant. To their surprise she gave birth to identical twin girls. They named them Gillian and Jennifer. Although they were identical they had different birthmarks. Jennifer had a birthmark on her waist 
waist that looked just like a birthmark that Jacqueline had. She also had a birthmark on her head that looked like another one of Jacqueline's scars. The family moved when the twins were just three months old. Two years later, the girls started asking for toys that belonged to their older sisters, even though they had never seen these toys before. Eventually, the family returned to Hexham. Despite being too young to remember that town, the girls knew all of the landmarks that only their sisters should have known. They were also scared of moving cars and kept telling their parents the car is coming to get them. After the age of five, these memories began to fade and the girls led normal lives. And finally at number one now, we have Nazi Al Danaf. In 2000, this boy's story was studied by Dr. Haraldson, a psychologist from the University of Iceland. At the age of one and a half, he told his mother, I am not small, I am big. I carry two pistols, I carry four hand grenades. I am a fearless, strong person. Don't be scared by the hand grenades, I know how to handle them. I have a lot of weapons, my children are young, and I want to go see them. The guns and grenade talk was pretty shocking as it was, but his parents didn't even know that he knew these words at this age. The boy also showed an unusual interest in cigarettes and whiskey. He asked them if he could go back to his hometown, which was 10 miles away. They had never been there. When they arrived, he directed them to a house and then jumped out of the car. He ran ahead with his father while his mothers and sisters talked to a local and told them about Nazi's reincarnation story. The man was stunned. The details matched his deceased father's story exactly. When Nazi returned, the man asked him questions about the house, which he all got correct. He got details about the family's history completely right too. He even found weapons on the property that he had stashed in his past life. They showed him a picture of the man who had died and asked Nazi who it was. He said, this is me. I was big, but now I am small. All right. That's all we got time for today, guys. But there's always time for a part two, if that's what you want. Does anyone have any reincarnation stories of their own? What do you think you were in a past life? I can't wait to hear what you come up with. In the meantime, thanks for watching as always, guys. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next one.